Hi guys, in this video we will be discussing the problem no sequences from code shift starter 72. This is a very interesting problem I will say and uh, so let's get started with this. So the problem says that uh, Alice gave Bob 3 integers n, k and s and uh, so we have to help Bob find an s good sequence. Uh, sequence b of length n is called s good if the following properties or following condition hold. So b i should be either minus 1, 0 or 1 for all of its occurrences. Also, b i into k to the power i minus 1 summed over i is equal to 1 till n should be equal to s. If you are not able to understand it, don't worry, I am going to explain all of this in detail. Then they say that if there are multiple s good sequences, we can print any of them. If there are no s good sequences, then we need to print minus 2. Then they have given us the way they have provided us with the input. So they have given us t and that is followed by n, k and s. t is basically the number of test cases. Uh, talking about the constraints, so t is less than or equal to 10 to the power 4, n is less than equal to 100, k is also less than or equal to 100 and s is less than or equal to 10 to the power 18. So make sure to use a long long or some other data type over here or it would easily overflow. And then they have given us a sample input as well. So in the sample input they have mentioned the first test case to be 3, 4 to 15 and 3, 6, 36 and 5, 5, 7. So with that in mind, let's get started. So this is the input they have provided. So what they said when when they wrote this particular formula that summation of i is equal to 1 till n in the form that b into k to power i minus 1 should give us s. What it basically means is that we will be having this kind of a formula that b naught into k naught plus b1 into k1 plus b2 into k square plus b3 into k cube up to so on till the time b n k to the power n minus 1. So we will be having something of this sorts and it should sum up to s. So that is what they are asking. So now if you look pay attention over here what if k is equal to 2. If k is equal to 2 then it turns out to be a basic binary number. So this looks like a binary sequence to us. So for k is equal to 2 we can simply convert the number into base 2 and give the answer. But what about a number that is not k is equal to? Can we still convert it and give the answer? We can't do that. For example, let's say k is equal to 3 over here. The only problem over here is that the value of b over here can be minus 1, 0 or 1. If we want to convert a, a number to another base, the value of b should have been from 0 till k minus 1. So for example, when we are talking of binary numbers, the value of the coefficient of value of b is 0, 1 because it needs to be 0 to k minus 1 over k, here k is uh, 2 so it is 0 and 1. So any of these values can happen over here. If let us say k is equal to 10 or k is, yeah, so k is equal to 10 is basically uh, normal numbers we talk about or the decimal numbers. So over here, uh, there you know that numbers can range from 0 to 9, right? So over th they too are just of this particular order. But over here, since they have explicitly mentioned that b should only take three values, minus 1, 0, 1. So we can't directly convert them into uh, other base and give the output. So what can be done over here? Now we will be following the similar strategy as in we do in the case of converting anything to a binary number or a decimal number into a binary number. So when we want to convert a decimal number into a binary number, what we do is that we check if the number has a modulus 2 is not is equal to equal to 1. Then we say that array dot push 1, right? Else array push 0 and then we decrease the number by 2 or write it as num is equal to num divided by 2. I think this is pretty simple. If you are watching this video, I am assuming you are already comfortable with such sim uh, simple concepts. So now how to extend it to this particular case. Over here, if we say, I am not comfortable writing it as nks, so let us write it as n, n is the num, n is the number of terms, number of terms. 
k is by base let's say so let's call k as the base they actually make more sense calling k as the base and uh, my the final number that they have mentioned by s let's call it the final number cool now it makes more sense to me okay so we were talking about the binary uh, how we convert decimal to binary and can we apply the similar concept over here so yeah what we can say is that if my final number let's take a mod with k if it's equal to 0 then at this particular location I don't need to do anything I can sim simply add a 0 over here right if it's equal to 1 then definitely I can add a 1 right because I have a possibility of adding a 1 so I'll use that what if it's anything that is not neither 0 or 1 can we do something about it we can do something about it if in case the value I'm getting is k minus 1 how what can we do in this particular case so if you remember we can also assign the value of b naught as minus 1 so in case we give it a value minus 1 so what would happen is it's similar to adding 1 to, to the entire sequence so we are not subtracting anything out of it we are not putting anything out of it if so basically we are having two things so one is the final answer I want to achieve so this is the final answer I want to achieve to achieve and then there's the current num so this is the current number I'm able to make let's call it cur let's call it fin for ease so now every time I can either add plus one to it I can subtract minus one from it right or I can do nothing with it if I add a 0 over here nothing would change so let's not do that I can simply write a 0 as well over here what if I do a minus 1 over here so doing a minus 1 over here is similar to doing a plus 1 over here so either of those two things mean the same so I can perform either this or that over plus 1 over here would also correspond to a minus 1 over here so I can either do this or I can do that so the relative difference remains the same with that what I can say is that if I am having fin mod k is equal to k minus 1 on top of that if I say I'm selecting a minus 1 so that means in fin itself I'll be adding 1 isn't that correct so what is the benefit of adding 1 into fin or into final answer if we add 1 into fin and if its modulus was already k minus 1 then its modulus would change to 0 is that correct or not because it's mo uh, its modulus was k minus 1 we added 1 to it so it became fin mod k is equal to 0 right so that is something we can perform what if we get another value that is neither 0 nor 1 nor k minus 1 what in that case so in that case we can simply say that uh, no permutations or no answer exists and we can reply them with a minus 2 that's it so to sum it up what we are checking is that we'll start our loop from i is equal to 0 till the time i is less than n i plus plus basic for loop in c plus plus so with that we'll say the mod so i'll write it as mod is equal to the final value we are having modulus k and if mod is 1 or mod is 0 or mod is k minus 1 then I'm happy with it I can perform some other other operation else I can say I can simply return minus 2 that's understandable if this is the case if mod is 1 then I'll just subtract 1 from fin so I'll do fin minus equal to 1 if mod is 0 I need not do anything if mod is k minus 1 then I'll add 1 to the fin also in this loop itself so this loop is still being over here I'll divide mod by uh, I'll divide f by k or we can write it as f is equal to f divided by k 
Now this is important because in the next loop what would happen is that the value of k would get increased by k itself. So that would be similar to decreasing f by k. I hope that is making sense to you, that is basic mathematics and with that I guess the logic gets covered. Let us get on to the solution now. So I have coded the solution over here. Let me try to expand it. Okay, great. So what I am saying is I am using a defined int long long over here because I wanted to save some time and I was directly coding it in the uh, code chef editor. I would suggest you not to do uh, codes like this because if you do codes like this then you might face some difficulties when you sit for placement interviews. So we are taking the number of test cases as t so we are accepting the input over here then we are iterating over all the test cases we are asking for three inputs that is n, k and fin. I really don't like taking names that are not making sense so I have not taken the typical name they had mentioned like s because s generally is used by us when we are talking of strings and not numbers. So after we have taken that fin I am taking a sum over here you can neglect that so that was another variable or uh, you can also neglect this curve okay. So I have taken a taken a boolean, boolean variable that is bad soul so bad soul basically refers as that the solution is not possible or the solution is bad so I will be using it later. So then I am iterating from 0 to n in each time I am taking the mod so the mod basically is fin mod k then I am saying if mod is 0 or mod is 1 or mod is k minus 1 as we discussed already in the solution then something can be done right if it is none of these then it is a bad solution and I can simply break from here itself however if mod is 1 then I will be subtracting 1 from the final answer and I will be pushing 1 to my array. So, because I am uh, I'm pushing this one into the array because at the end if a solution exists we need to display that particular solution. So, for that to happen I am pushing it into my array if mod is equal to k minus 1 I am pushing minus 1 into the array and I am also incrementing uh, the final answer by 1 else I am pushing uh, 0 onto the array I am not doing anything because it is simple it is simply doing fin plus equal to 0 minus equal to 0 so that does not make any difference. So, I have not included that and then I am dividing the final by k because I mentioned that in each iteration uh, k is going by k times so that is similar to dividing final by k else. So the else condition would be executed when the mod value was neither 0 nor 1 neither k minus 1. So if else condi condition is executed I can say the solution is bad and I can break it. Now once this entire loop executes n times and the solution exists so I will be having my solution in the, this particular array that I had taken. Also by this time the value of the final answer should have been 0 because at every step I was either decrementing it or incrementing it in such a way that it becomes 0 right. So if it is 0 only then, I, uh, then a solution exists I am explicitly checking for a bad solution also you can ac actually remove it it is kind of redundant but it was looking better to me and uh, making more sense to me so I that is why I added it over here. Then I am iterating through the entire array and printing out the elements and a slash n is required because we need a new line after every answer else if if it was a bad solution if I was not able to come up with the final solution then I will print minus 2 and that completes the code. So let us try running it. Okay, so for the sample test case we have the valid answer, let us try to submit it. So you can say it passed all the test cases with a good time complexity as well I guess. So the code is pretty clean and neat. There was not much of a concept that was utilized over here however the intuition was somewhat difficult. So yeah that is it if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Bye bye.